Hi, friends. I'm here with Alan Seymour, a tutor from the Spiritualist National Union, who was extremely helpful to me in my development and certification process. So I have invited him here tonight to share some information and just his self with all of us. And so I would invite um, I invite you, Alan, to please introduce yourself. Evening. Um, right, as Pat, as the question said, my name's Alan Seymour. I was uh, very much involved with Croydon Spiritualist Church in Surrey, which is south of London. I uh, became involved in spiritualism through um, healing. Uh, somebody who was quite close to many, many years ago in the 1980s was uh, having problems with their health and not getting much success from uh, visiting hospitals and doctors. And uh, a guy I was working with at the time said, "My, tell me to mind my own business if you like, but my partner is a spiritual healer. And uh, I didn't have a clue what that was at that time, but um, he said that she may be able to help. So uh, long story short, uh, we visited the healer and um, there was some definite benefit to her health and also she was given some very good evidential messages because the healer was a medium as well um, about her father who she didn't know had passed to spirit at all no there was no information given so that really opened my eyes to the possibilities of uh, becoming interested in spiritualism back in 1987 I think it was and um, then I progressed through my own church. I went to my own church, Croydon Church, and uh, was greeted very warmly and um, gradually became more and more interested and more and more involved at the invitation of people within the church. And um, so that led to a very long journey of being involved in spiritualism at quite a lot of levels. Um, yeah, so that's really interesting that you know, through a series of circumstances, you found out about spiritual healing and were brought into spiritualism through that path. And since you have been attending churches, and I do want to learn more about you yourself, but I'm really curious to know, have you witnessed anything? Have you ever seen like anyone channel at a church or... Um, is there any one particular thing that stands out in your mind you'd like to share? About my church? Or anything in spiritualism that really uh, helped you to know that it's real? I think looking back, uh, there's no doubt that there was spirit influence uh, that it pushed me forward, if you like. If I backed away, I always found I, I, I was led back again in some way back to the church. Um, but through developing my mediumship in a church circle, I know I gained in confidence because I know um, I was very shy, very nervous about speaking in public. But by joining the church circle, being made to get up on the platform and, and speak, uh, my self-confidence certainly grew. And um, now I think nothing of standing in front of the congregation and speaking for 15 or 20 minutes on philosophy and doing mediumship, which is even more of a challenge. Because you, can't, you can't prepare mediumship, can you? You can prepare yeah. a message, uh, prepare a, an address, but you cannot prepare mediumship. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's just it's the support of like-minded people within that church that um, helped me and others to develop. And also I was able to um, offer the benefit of my experience to newcomers as well. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's, 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 it's something you can't rush, but if you go along with it, then your progress, I think, will be assured. Excellent. So um, how many students have, would you say you've worked with, like myself, when I was going through the SD1 program? Um, I don't know how many there are within the religion, but I know I was the tutor for about 15 SD1 students, as well as healing the H1 course 
um, probably another 20 there. So I was quite busy doing being a tutor for people like yourself. Um, yeah, and quite, uh, it, it's good because you you get you um, enjoy the experience as much as the student does when they achieve good results, good marks. Um, right. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, yeah, because I know you always. Get, get, you give great feedback and you really seem like you care about spiritualism and what your students are learning. And um, so I'm just wondering, I know you said you've you served as a medium and you have served as a speaker and healer. Could you tell us a little bit about the books you've written? I know you've written four books and I think that's very interesting. Yes, the, the first one, um, through my development, I found that I was um, being inspired and it became obvious at some point that somebody wanted to speak through me. Um, and uh, gradually I learned to put myself aside and allow a spirit to speak through me. And his name is Fine Feather. And over the last 25 years, he's given me some wonderful philosophy when I've done public demonstrations, allowed him to speak for an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. in a totally different voice to mine and with so much more wisdom than I will ever have. And uh, so I, everything was recorded as well. And um, we transcript, did a transcript of all the recordings with some wonderful philosophy, some really lovely words, a bit like Silver Birch. And um, mm -hmm. so I decided, uh, because I was telling people who came to the church that I'd done that, people kept saying to me, you should write a book. Mm -hmm. And one day I decided that I would attempt to write a book. And uh, the, the result was a book called A Wonderful Spiritual Journey. And it con contains all of the transcripts from Brian Ferrer's words. Um, and uh, the second book was um, created as a result of somebody left some CDs, four CDs in the church letterbox anonymously asking that somebody could publish what was there because it was so important. It turned out to be a trainee uh, Catholic priest. And um, I thought, here we go, he's gonna, he's gonna have a, a pop of spiritualism. But the more I listened to it, it became obvious that he was actually anti-Catholic through his experiences. And um, he's sort of analyzed the Bible and uh, quite critically, I have to say. So I decided based on the experience of producing one book I decided I would make a book of that and um, and then I added on the end of it the philosophy of spiritualism the principles and I called it religious tyranny spiritual truths mm -hmm. and um, the third book wasn't mine um, it was a copy of somebody else's book it's called Kaleidoscope of Living Thoughts it's um, a collection of spirit teachings by Ken and Betty Collins and we used to do readings from this book in our services and lots of people asked where that reading came from when I told them they tried to get a copy of the book but it was out of print and the publisher didn't exist anymore and I think the couple had probably passed the spirit because of their age so I decided to copy it and um, with all the usual things about copyright prepared to uh, if anybody stepped forward and said that's that's my book I want some money for it I would have been quite happy to do it and uh, so that's that's out there, uh, Kaleidoscope of Living Thoughts. But my last one was 750 pages. It's the history of Croydon Spiritualist Church. Um, before I left Croydon, I, I was in the library there. And above the library, there's this room where uh, all of the minutes of committee meetings and annual general meetings going back to 1906 um, were being stored. And uh, first of all, I created a, a board of all the presidents of a church listed annually. We put that up in the church. And during the lockdowns of COVID, a couple of years, I decided that maybe I could try and make a book of our history. Mm -hmm. And um, I got started. I thought it might be boring, but there's so many interesting stories in there. Mm -hmm. And also lots of pioneers of spiritualism. Not, 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 it's not all about Croydon. So many people of the pioneers came to Croydon. David Bruton, the past president of the union, did the forward for me. And he actually 
said that it reads like a who's who of spiritualism, such was the importance of Croydon in the spiritualist church. Um, so again, that's another one that's available. And that, that came out last year, and uh, the history of Croydon spiritualist church, 1906 to 2021. 750 pages. It's, I've got it here, actually. That's how thick it is. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. It's back to front, I think. It's like a mirror image if I show it to you like that. It's, yes. Can you see it okay? Yeah, that's wonderful. And yeah. I'm curious, when you wrote that book, is there one particular thing that stood out or story or anything that kind of surprised you in the book? Um, I suppose there are a few things. The main thing that jumps out that I could speak about was just after the Second World War, about 1948. Um, there was lots of there were lots of rumours going around the church about the president and the secretary. Um, they were alleged to have been having an affair. Wow. And, uh, the, the secretary immediately resigned, and the president. In, in the language at the time, he said, oh, I will not resign on the, based on the um, uh, rumours and things, you know, that are being spoken about within the church. Yeah. And the vice president, I said, sir, these are not just rumours, they are a matter of fact. Oh, and uh, so he was made to resign. And, oh, boy. Uh, so a bit of scandal within the church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There well, are other things, but yeah well um you know that's where prince principle five comes into effect i guess you know and you mentioned the principles that you added them at the end of one of your books um the one i've actually read that book it's very good um and so as far as the principles are concerned what would you say is your favorite principle and why i i like to ask people that question Favorite principle it has to be the brotherhood of man, um, because uh, religion should be all about helping people. It shouldn't be about um, you know dressing up in fancy clothes and, and preaching gospels that are centuries old. It should be about helping people, our fellow man, without any thought of, um, of reward or um, you know any sort of recognition for it. And um, I have to say, it's a principle that's sorely needed in, in, in the world today, really, um, because I think we could all do more to help our fellow man, um, particularly with what's going on in, in Ukraine at the moment. Right. Well, that doesn't surprise me because you just you come across as a very kind and um, generous and helpful person. And um, so I think you're a fabulous role model, not only for spiritualists, but for humanity in general. And so that's why I invited you to be interviewed. And I'm so grateful to you for accepting because um, really there's so many things that people can benefit from in spiritualism if they only knew about it. And I think it's people like you that will um, encourage or maybe inspire people and has in the past, I know certainly myself. Um, how do you practice spiritualism in your daily life? You know, when you're making decisions or um, how do you use the principles or just the philosophy or the philosophy in general? Very much with healing in mind. Um, I think we all subconsciously send out thoughts of healing and prayers to people in need, um, people who require healing for health reasons, those suffering the effects of homelessness and hunger and poverty. And I've also, also already mentioned uh, Ukraine. Um, so as spiritualists, it seems like a natural act to pray for situations to improve. Um, other than that, really, I don't, keep it a secret anymore that I'm a spiritualist. There was a time when I would be very careful, very discreet about my beliefs because spiritualism uh, can be ridiculed, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that less and less now, but I do speak about spiritualism and um, the importance of it in my life and, mm -hmm. and the good that spiritualists 
do. You know, it's so nice when I've experienced so many times when people have come into my church and their shoulders are down, they're looking very sad and upset. They come into the church for the first time looking for something and um, they've just lost somebody, their husband's died or whatever. And speaking to them, comforting them, you don't come straight out of it and say, I'll get a message from your husband, anything like that. But you just allow them to find out for themselves about spiritualism. And um, it's wonderful, you know, you know, six months or a year, you see the smile come back on their face and the friendships they've made and uh, a new life has begun for them sometimes. That's it's such, such an encouraging and uh, inspiring um, thing to happen. Thank you. Yes, I, I know there are skeptics and, you know, people who maybe misinterpret spiritualism. So, you know, we all have to kind of deal with that at times. So I guess um, I just, I don't, I know we're just about ready to close. And I would just ask um, if you have any, I'm curious to know if you have, how you deal with skeptics or if you have any pointers or you just kind of avoid them and, or any thoughts about them. Like sometimes I think skeptics are actually mediums, but they just haven't accepted it yet. And, um, and then I guess if there's anything else you'd like to share, any other, anything we didn't cover that you would like to, to share, please yeah, give you the floor. Um, regarding skeptics, I, I feel that some people's negative perception of our religion is inherited. They don't really know why they don't like our religion. And uh, it's because they've been brought up in a strict orthodox religion and they're reluctant to, to question. But I sometimes say to them that uh, for those that know, no explanation is necessary. And for those who don't know, no explanation will do. Yeah. That's one of my favourite sayings. Um, but uh, regarding experience, um, I, I am a member of a golf club. And uh, when I wrote my first book, I did tell a few people I'd done it. And uh, they were interested. I trusted them. They, they weren't particularly yeah. religious. Um, but when I word got around to other people, members of a golf club, and uh, one day when we were waiting to tee off from the first tee, I think four people approached me and said, oh, I'm really interested that you've written this book. And they told me about situations that had happened to them over the years. And, and how do you explain that then? You know, <laughs> it, it became obvious to me that there are a lot more people out there that have belief and a knowledge of spirit than uh, we're prepared to uh, admit. And um, yeah. so that's encouraging. That's Absolutely. Important. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think that your sharing will even encourage more and help them to find like minded people at that spiritualism can offer. So um, thank you. I always, always emphasize that spirit, we, we do so much good within the community, churches, spiritualists. And um, when you put it like that, people do start to think actually that maybe there is something in this that I should look into. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, well, thank you again. And I appreciate your making time uh, for um, to share your, um, your gifts with us 